Well, hey there, native plant enthusiasts. This is Santino, education coordinator for Bowman to Wildflower Preserve, coming at you with another quick nature note. I'm down here along the Perry Trail. As you can see behind me, our backdrop is filled with Virginia bluebell and our wood poppy. But today's uh, nature note, these two are not the native plant highlight. They'll get their own day in the sun. Today, I wanna to introduce you to two of my favorite spring ephemerals that I think often go overlooked in the spring season. Um, this year, they have to be littering the hillside with a snowy white, and those are two members of the family, or the genus Dicentra, um, and those are squirrel corn and Dutchman's breeches. Let's take a closer look. As I said, both Dutchman's breeches and squirrel corn are members of the genus Dicentra. The name stems from the plant's two-spurred or heart-shaped bloom. This genus consists of over 20 different species that enjoy woodlands with well-drained soils, and they both typically grow to be about one foot tall. Enjoying deep shade, the leaves of the plant are lacy in appearance and, divide, and deeply divided. Both Dutchman's breeches and squirrel corn are ephemerals, and they are very important to the success of our early pollinators. First up is Dicentra cucularia, or Dutchman's breeches. It appears with three to 14 drooping flowers and lacy compound leaves. Its fruit will be bean-shaped capsules that taper at both ends. As bumblebees are one of the first insects to emerge in the spring, Dutchman's breeches and its relatives are dependent on them for pollination. In fact, both the flower structure and the mechanism by which the flower are pollinated are specifically adapted to bumblebees. A member of the Papa Veraceae, or poppy family, Dutchman's breeches contain several alkaloids that may have effects on the brain and heart. Historically, it was used for several skin ailments as well as a blood purifier. Uh, because of the narcotic compounds contained within the flower, cows that graze on them will start to stumble, giving the plant the nickname Little Blue Stackers. Squirrel corn is also a herbaceous perennial that grows approximately one foot tall. Much like its cousin, Dutchman's Breeches, it has white flower, However, as you can see from the squirrel corn here on the left, um, the flower is more heart-shaped, whereas Dutchman's breeches takes the shape of uh, pantaloons, which is how it got its name, Dutchman's breeches. Much like its cousin, uh, it is also toxic with highly dissected leaves. And again, as I said, its flower is uh, heart-shaped. In addition to bumblebees for pollination, Dutchman's breeches and squirrel corn are both plants who require a secondary insect for their reproductive success. Both plants require ants to disperse their seeds in a process called myrmecockery. The plant produces a seed that has a nutrient-rich deposit on it, um, that's the eliasome, and it entices the ants to come and visit. The ants take the seed back to their nests and they eat the eliasome and discard the seed uh, with their nest debris and it's protected there until the flower germinates. Uh, so this not only gives the ants a wonderful treat, but the flower gets dispersed and is allowed to germinate in a very nutrient-rich environment. All right, friends. That just about wraps it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed this quick video, and I hope you learned something about two of my favorite spring ephemeral flowers. I hope you have the opportunity to come out to the preserve and the Perry Trail yourself and check out all the glory that is our spring blooms. And uh, yeah, until next time, make sure you always like, comment, share, and subscribe. It goes a long way to help the preserve. And keep on experiencing what's natural and learn what's native. Take care.